Good morning. I'm Jim Spencer. I'm with the Bluefield West Virginia Economic Development Authority, and we continue to host training classes. And today we're doing this in conjunction with my friend Harold Patterson, who is with the Small Business Development Center. He'll introduce himself here just in a minute. But the session is entitled Bragging on Your Baby. In my time uh, here in Bluefield, there are a lot of humble business owners. I think humble, that's a good biblical characteristic. But when you're a business owner, your business is your baby. And if you're not bragging about your baby, who is? I learned a long time ago, if you don't tell your story, somebody else will, and you may not like how they tell it. So this morning, we're going to cover some things about bragging about your baby and see the world's worst elevator pitch. And we're going to talk about that as well. Harold? Thanks, Jim. Uh, good morning, Ed, guys, and uh, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for taking yeah. time out of your day to... to come here and try to learn about an elevator pitch. Uh, I'm with the Small Business Development Center of the state of West Virginia. Uh, we do counseling, we do business planning, loan packaging. We try to be a one-stop shop for small businesses. We try to answer your questions or at least find an answer to your questions. That's my elevator pitch. Everybody has to have one. Everybody needs one because we're always meeting new people. We're always in a crowd uh, trying to generate business. I, I try to generate just like you guys do. So we need these elevator pitches. We need these ways to start conversations with people to get them interested in what we do and try to get them to buy into us. You understand? So we come up with this idea of putting together this little format. And uh, I hope you like the baby format because Jim calls your business your baby. Just like he said, if you're not bragging on your baby, who's going to? Now, everybody thinks that their baby is lovely. Everybody thinks that their baby is just the best kid in the world, right? And if we ask you about it, you're going to start telling us all the good aspects or all the good features or, you know, the baby did this the other day or the baby did that the other day. Well, your business is the same way. You've got to start learning to brag on your business to other people. So hopefully by the end of this, uh, we'll be able to you'll be able to do that. And one of the things we want to do is to start working on your elevator pitch. That's why Jim told you we're going to work you through lunch. Oh, excuse me. These are the people that uh, can give you some help today. Jim, you've met. Faith is in the back. She's working the computer. And I'm going to be your uh, your instructor for today. Uh, Jim's going to take over right now, and he's going to tell you about a program that they use called Moby. Thank you, sir. Faith, you're going to be able to log me in. Okay, I'm going to have Faith log us in. I'm going to show you something live real quick, and we're not going to spend a lot of time. But we have partnered with Santa Clara University in California for the Mountain Business Institute. You two have been taking classes in it already. Uh, the classes are free, 24-7, fully online. What you have, one of your handouts here that we'll also provide when we uh, post this uh, is a marketing session there. And you'll see that it's only about seven pages. We're going to log in. I'm going to show you two short videos, but their content is such that it's not college level content. What it is, is the average age of an entrepreneur in the United States is 40 plus. And so it's information to make sure that they su can succeed. You could be the world's best chef, food truck folks. You could be the best yoga instructor. You could be the best whatever. But if you can't manage your money, your cost, inventory, other things, business insurance, you're in trouble. As a matter of fact, there is a high failure rate for a lot of small business, and I think a lot of it is due from the lack of education, not on their goods or services, but the other things that they need to do related to business. So we're going to log in. I'm going to show you real quick uh, two videos. Faith, if you'll log me in. Make sure we share sound. Any questions so far? Okay. Then again, this is free. And at the end, if you want to know how to log in and, and get this, you can go to our webpage, mybluefield.org. 
uh, you can go under uh, resources and you'll see entrepreneur boot camp. We have a module in starting a business and one in expanding a business. Yes, ma'am. The question is, can they take the business expansion classes? Yes, they're good for anybody. For example, the business ex expansion class covers uh, two topics that are similar, selling and negotiating, which is very important, but also it gets into advanced e-commerce, like selling online and things like that. It has growth by duplication. It's also got one on franchising your business and different things. So family succession planning, you know, because there's a lot of times a family wants to pass it on through generations. So it's good content. I took the classes myself. I would not advocate for something I haven't done myself. So this is the marketing class. And uh, so what you have right there is what is printed. But with this little red arrow that you see here, click that, you get a full screen, but if you click it here, you get a video. And for the sake of time, I just want to show you one of the videos to give you an example of the content. It is important to understand that selling is about building relationships with your customers. Customers are more informed today than ever before, and the competition is fierce. The customer has to feel that you are there for them to provide the best product with the best value and the best service. Business owners can sometimes get in the habit of watching the bottom line more than the relationships they build with their customers. This may lead to initial sales, but not to long-term customers that become champions of your product and brand. Here are some tips to help make sure you are successful in the sales process and in building those long-term relationships with your customers. First, have a positive attitude all of the time towards your customers and the sales process. Even on days where the weight of business gets you down or a customer can get to you, make sure to maintain the positive attitude. Next, appearance really does matter. Make sure your staff is well-dressed, smiling, and also positive. The first 30 seconds of speaking with customers is vital. Have a plan. In order to be successful in sales, you need to have a plan. Pre-qualify your targets. Do your research. Have a minimum outcome goal that you expect to achieve after your meeting or call with the customer has concluded. Next, make sure you qualify the customer immediately. You should be able to tell within the first 30 seconds if this customer is able or willing to buy your product or service. Maintain relationships, but do not chase customers that have no intention of buying from you. Customers buy when they have a problem they have to solve or a pain point they need to fix. Talk in benefits, not in features. Know what you sell and speak in terms that the customers will understand. What problems can your product or service solve for the customer? What benefits will they get from your product or service? If you just list features, then you become no different than your competition. Let the customer talk. Paraphrase what they've said with the benefits and solutions that match what the customer has implied their needs are. Don't be afraid of the silence, but always be closing. Always ask for the sale or a confirmation of movement in the sales process 100% of the time. And lastly, don't give up. You will hear no. Be cordial to your customers. Thank your customers for their time. Ask for referrals and follow up. It is imperative to maintain those relationships. While it may be a no today, no one knows what needs may arise tomorrow. And you want to make sure that you are the business that is top of mind when that need does come up. That makes sense? Each class pretty much has videos like that and I just give you content. Again, this is free. And so we try to supplement that with other classes going into elevator pitch and some things like that today. But I highly encourage people to go through the Moby classes. I Myself, there was even things that I learned uh, in that. And if you think about it, a lot of times people, when you go to buy a car, what's one of the first things they ask you after they get your name? So, Mr. Ponder, what do you do for a living? Why do they do that? They're trying to determine probably, this is my speculation, they're trying to determine what your uh, income is and what vehicle to try to show you. 
So a lot of times they're getting information without just coming out and saying, hey, how much do you make? They asked in a different way. And so uh, that's part of what we're talking about today. I would encourage you to go through this, take that. That's the same content that's there. Uh, but you can also get through Moby a badge of completion that you can use in your social media marketing and things like that. So if you have any questions on Moby, let us know afterwards. Harold? Okay. Uh oh We need to make a bigger aisle through here so we don't get... <laughs> Thanks, Jim. And uh, I highly recommend you going through that course. I, I talked to every one of my clients about it. Uh, doesn't matter where they're at. Uh, Jim doesn't care where you live. Uh, he's got from surrounding counties uh, and actually, uh, I think some from Virginia that have taken taken that course. So uh, I highly recommend it. It's very beneficial. And it actually helps you in your uh, process with me because that's what we do. We help you put together a business plan sometimes. So, okay. The, yeah, at the end of every course, you're going to, in Moby, you're going to come across the do's and don'ts. These are the recommendations of things that you should do for that section. These are the rest recommendations for the things that you shouldn't do for that section. Uh, jump into business without a clear marketing strategy. I see people all the time. They have an idea. I'm the greatest cook in the world. I'm the greatest uh, uh, retail person on the planet. But they don't really have a marketing strategy. They don't know who their target customer is. They don't know... Uh, what the habit of their target customer is. They don't know the psychological ways of talking to that customer. They don't know. Um, actually, once they figure out who the target customer is, they don't know how to reach them because they don't know, is it Facebook that I need to get on? Is it Instagram? Is it Snapchat? Is it old-fashioned newspapers? Is it the TV? You know, what is my target customer looking at or listening to radio? You know, which radio station? There's there's tons of them. There's classic rock, there's country, there's gospel, there's R and B, there's I mean, there's all kinds of different. What's my target guy looking to? So they don't have a strategy put together to reach that customer that's going to come in and buy from me 80% of the time. Uh I'll go through another one here. Uh, yeah, just sell on your website and not provide useful information and a mix of serve and sell. I tell a lot of people, and I don't care who you are, if you're in the food truck business, you don't necessarily just have to sell product uh, or I'm going to be at this location. You could put recipes on there. You could put health healthy type uh, information on there about if why you eat a certain food or why we're making uh, my my food in a certain way. You could actually explain things to people and not just try to sell them your product, make their life better. One of the things Jim said was somebody's going to come to buy from you to make their life better. So that could be what you do on your website or your Facebook or, 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 or Instagram or whatever you choose to do. So there's a lot of good information here that if you have questions on Jim, myself, somebody will, will get you, like I said before, we'll get you some answers or we'll talk you through it. Okay, if you guys have any questions, again, uh, just shout them out. Uh, you can stop me if uh, I get confused because you may forget it later on. Okay. So let's move on. Like I said, everybody wants to brag on their baby. And whether you call it an elevator pitch, an elevator speech, or an elevator statement, your business is still your baby. And you got to brag on it. See down in the corner, today's date, 11 a.m., 
It's six, eight pounds, six ounces, 21 inches long. Your baby was born on a certain day. And it's going to start from a point A and it's going to grow. And through the years, you're going to take pictures of it and you're going to write down during this period of time, my baby was doing this. My baby was doing that. Oh, my baby took its first steps today. Actually made my first sell. Actually had my first customer. And a lot of times you walk in and you see that dollar on the wall. You know, the first dollar that they ever, ever made. So you can create a history and I'll actually help you with your elevator pitch, but you can create a history of your business and you really need to because if you go for lending, if you, if you do put it together some sort of a package, they're going to want to know, how did you start? What have you done since you started? Okay, so start, start developing this history. Um, and before, before we get into everything, here's some links and you have them in your packet there. Here's some links to some uh, examples online and some uh, helpful videos that pretty much is gonna repeat the same stuff we are. Now, one reason why I'm giving you this and you're gonna learn a few things here in, 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 in the next few slides, um, it takes a human being seven to eight times to actually remember something. Do you understand why wives tell husbands I need A, B, and C from the store, especially if it gets over three. <laughs> you got to tell them seven or eight different times in order for them to, to, to remember. So that's why I'm giving you this. So you can go back and watch it and remember. Pretty good links, actually. Okay, let's get started. You're going to have to name. Yes, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's got them and they're they're in the thing there too. But she'll she'll email you the links. Uh, you're gonna have to name your business. Everybody does. I chose for this slide uh, Tom's Guitar Center, and then I showed you some pictures of Tom's Guitar Center. This may be the starting point. Who am I trying to attract? Who am I trying to attract in this uh, in those pictures? Who do you think? Well, there's a woman down here, so uh, women are getting into playing guitar, so maybe I'm trying to attract them into the store. Females, right? So that could be a customer base that I have studied. There's potential there, but nobody's maybe uh, uh, attached to it. Nobody's maybe tried to get lure them into their facility, so maybe I'm going to try to. Maybe this is the, the group that I'm going to try to. Up in top, well, obviously that's a guy. He's sitting around, he's playing guitar. Could be for a group, could be for a church, could be for, you know, whatever. But he's casually playing a guitar. Could be a beginner. He could just be practicing. So I'm trying to put ideas in your head about the marketing here. And that's that's where we're going. It's a short an elevator pitch is a short summary about your organization. It's limited in length. We talk about an elevator ride. Most elevator rides are anywhere from uh, 15 seconds around here to about a minute in, in bigger areas. So should compel your audience to continue the conversation after the ride's over. That's probably the most important point. point. You want to get them interested enough that when that elevator door opens up and you guys walk off, that conversation is going to continue. They're going to be interested in asking you about your product or your service, what you do, how you do it, how you can enhance their life. Yes.
and incorporate it into your speech, I guess is where we're going. Uh, last part, if the speech is not done effectively, and we're going to show you an example, it's going to turn them off. They're just going to hand you a business card or they're going to blow you off, basically. Oh, that's nice. Good luck in the future. And you never hear from them again. So any questions? What we're going to do now is we're going to go into some tips on creating and developing an elevator speech. Okay, first tip, be specific. Treat the elevator pitch, speech, whatever. Treat it like your mission statement. A lot of people do not like to develop a mission statement, but a mission statement tells the world how my product or service enhances your life or their life rather. Okay. It tells them I can make your life better. So incorporate the mission statement into the elevator pitch. Sure, go ahead. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, honey mustard. Ooh, that'll work. That's okay. <laughs> So basically, we're going to incorporate your mission statement into the elevator pitch, but it's going to add a little extra information, the who, the what, the where, and the why, okay? Who. Make sure your name and your organization's name is in your speech. What is your mission statement? How, again, how can you adapt it to the pitch? Where are you located and where is your impact focus? Impact focus would be the region or the clientele that you're trying to reach. Okay. And uh, why? Why should the person speaking care about your organization? Okay. We're going to develop these a little bit further. Here's an example. First one, my company writes mobile device applications for other businesses. Well, that's cool. That's that's fine. I mean, it's kind of a little specific. It's kind of a little vague. It may lead to them asking you questions. But if you do it the next way, my company develops mobile applications that businesses use to train their staff remotely. Remember COVID right? Remotely. This results in a big increase in efficiency for an organization's managers. Everybody got into remote training. Everybody got into working from home, everybody. So they developed their elevator pitch to fit what was going on at the time. Now that could be very important. And there's going to be another slide in here about reading the room, reading who you're talking to and, and kind of um, uh, changing your pitch a little bit. I give a pitch to you guys because you're potential clients. And I said that, here's what we do. We do the business planning. We do the loan packaging. We'll answer your questions. We try to be a one-stop shop for everybody. That may be interesting to you because a lot of, pe a lot of business owners kind of feel that there's no help for me out there. I'm out here on my own. I need help. I need somebody to come alongside and lift me up. That's what that kind of says is 
we're here to help you in these areas. If I were talking to a bank, I would focus more on the loan packaging. And I would tell the bank, yeah, we do loan packaging. We do straight bank loan packaging. We do SBA loan packaging. We do USDA rural development loan packaging. Uh, we've done all kinds of different packages. Uh, here's what we include in the packages, A, B, and C. If you have other needs, then you need to let us know what it is and we'll adapt to what we do. So you change your speech or you change your, uh, your elevator pitch based on what crowd you're, you're looking at or you're talking to. Any questions so far? And, and you notice that <clears throat> the blue for the boy and the pink for the girl. So um, keep it short. Like I said, keep it short. Your average elevator ride is going to be somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds. Uh, here in this area, it's a lot shorter because you usually only have two or three floors. So think about in terms of about 30 to 60 seconds, most averaging 45 seconds. And pack it with enough information to keep them interested but keep it short. Don't bore them with a long speech. Don't have a three minute elevator pitch that they're going to go, okay, well, you know, I got a, you know, I, I got a thing here. And so keep it short and, and keep them interested. It says a little ambiguity is good. And that's probably true because it can lead to questions if they're really interested. Um, like I said, when I'm, I'm telling you guys, I said, I do business planning. I do loan packaging. I do the financial projections. I do, you know, this kind of stuff. I don't tell you exactly how I do them. You can ask that. Where do you get your business plans from? You know, say things that lead to other questions about what you do. Um. And again, there's going to be occasion to where somebody uh, maybe at a chamber of commerce meeting or maybe at some other meeting when they say, OK, would you please stand and tell us about your business? And they'll give you three, three to five minutes. Well, that's a really long elevator speech. OK, and you can adapt what you're saying then. So keep it short. Remember, life is uh, life is uh, short and you got to make it sweet. You're talking about your baby. Again, concise, brief, 30 to 60 seconds long. Uh, are there any questions on this part? Okay. Practice. Not in my house. <laughs> practice. One of the hardest things that you're going to do is to remember to practice your speech. Talk to your friends. Talk to me. Talk to Jim. Talk to your employees if you have them. Practice your speech. You don't want to come across as robotic. You want to come across as a human being, just natural. I love my baby. When a parent is bragging on their kid, are they nervous? Are they reserved? No. They're natural. They flow with what they do. you proud of what you are, proud of your business, proud of my accomplishments. So practice it and become as natural as, as uh, you can be. Uh, so avoid being stiff and, and robotic. Uh, be aware of nonverbals. I talk with my hands a lot, you know, but be aware of nonverbals, don't you? Well, you know, here, uh, here we, uh, uh, we try to, uh, and you're looking down, you got your arms folded, your reserve, you know, don't, don't talk to me. You know, why did you ask me that question? Be inviting. Okay. Watch your nonverbals, watch your body language, watch your eyes. Make eye contact. That's one of the things that uh, is, is on here 
also. Uh, make sure it's clear, make sure it's understandable. Get good people who are going to be honest with you that tell you the truth. It may make sense to you. It may not make sense to others. Okay, so we'll have to clean all that type of stuff up. Okay, set a goal of practicing it regularly. It don't have you don't have to do it every day, but at least you know set some time apart that you're going to do this. Now, in the beginning, I suggest you practice pretty regular about trying to put this thing together. You know, you got to time it. Look in a mirror. Record yourself. Have you ever heard yourself on tape? You won't recognize your voice. I did a radio show back years ago when I was uh, EDA director of McDowell County, and they gave me a tape to, to listen to it. I stuck the tape in and started it up, and I'm, what's that? Who's that strange voice? It was me. So record yourself. Listen to your, listen to the way you speak. Listen to the way you pronounce words, because you want to be clear in what you're trying to tell people. You want to be clear in what you're trying to say to others. Um, you want it to sound like conversation. You don't want it to be overly aggressive. You just want to tell people, hey, here's what we do. I think I can help you. I think uh, my product or my service can enhance your life or solve your problems because that's what people are buying. Even if it's to another company, that's what somebody's buying. Did I hear correctly you're into yoga? Stress reduction. How much stress is out there right now? You know, even other companies, uh, we won't get into Twitter, but Twitter had a whole yoga section that their employees could go to do stress reduction. You know, Eli messed that up, but <laughs> anyway, they had a whole section for stress reduction, you know? So there's ways of selling your business to other people and other companies. Um, any question on this? Again, we're looking for 30 seconds to a minute on, on your speech. Leave a lasting impression. <laughs> You know, cute little baby up on top. Everybody's laugh. He'll they'll remember him. Don't be like the guy on the bottom. <laughs> Leave a lasting impression. Make sure that they're going to remember you. One of the things in branding that that we teach and and others teach is you got to get in somebody's head. Okay. If I'm thinking about buying tires. And I would were to come to you and I would say, what's a good brand of tire that I should purchase? What would your responses be? Just shout them out. Yeah, what what brand of tire? What what's what's a good brand of tire? Ah, ball season. Michelin, Michelin, Ansel, you got a preference? Okay. It, it's it's kind of funny, and, and Faith, Faith may know my pitch, but it's kind of funny that a female said Michelin. Back in the day, and you guys may remember, some of you may remember, some may not. Back in the day, Michelin made a commercial and they had a baby sitting inside the tire. A baby sitting inside the tire. What were they trying to tell you? I'm going to protect your family. I'm going to protect your baby. And all the females related to that, and Michelin got inside their heads, and Michelin is the first tire that most females will tell you to go buy. You go ask my mom right now, 80-some years old, 
What's a good tire, Mom? Well, I like the Michelins. Are Michelins any better than the other ones? Yeah. But they got they got inside your head. Now, if I came to you and I said, uh, hey, where's a good place to buy tires? Where are you going to tell me? Because that's a local question. Who's got guarantees? But what what place would you tell me to go to? A lot of times you ask that question around here and they'll say somewhere like, well, go over to Sam's because they have rebates, you know, and, and they do this and they they advertise a little bit. Uh, Walmart, they, they have some deals sometimes, you know, they, they'll advertise a little bit. But is there any local, local guy? I know in Beckley, C. Adam Tony's really big. You talk to people around Beckley and you say, where's a good place to buy tires? C. Adam Tony. He's got a ton of advertising out there. He got inside your head that I've got good deals. I've got all kinds of brands of tires. Um, you know, they got inside your head to say, if you think of tires, you think of me. If I think of smoothies, I'm going to think of you, right? If I think of yoga, I'm going to think of you. See where I'm going to? I didn't forget about the guys. When you ask the guy what tire I should buy, they say Goodyear's. Goodyear Eagle. Why? Because that's what they used in NASCAR. And most guys would relate to that. They'll relate to the racing end of it. So see what see what they're trying to do, getting inside your head. Leave a lasting impression. You only have 30 to 60 seconds to kind of do that, to leave a lasting impression. But you got to tell them how my product or my service can make your life better. You're good. A uh, couple of hints there. Uh, make sure you have business cards. Make sure you have business cards with all of your information, ways to contact you, phone number, uh, website, email, all of that should be on there, okay? Cute flyers. Now, you don't want nothing real big, but those trifold handouts sometimes are really nice. Uh, be consistent with your messaging on your cards, your flyers, your brochures, or whatever you've put together. Make sure that your messaging is consistent. Jim? Yeah. If you don't know what this is, it's called a to it. And they used to hand these out about when you get around to it, you know, and you'll have a message on here. Uh, Jim did it for his business here, the Economic Development Authority. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. We're friends, and I'm not. I don't think he has COVID, so I'll stand beside him. Uh, I used to play a lot of ball. Now I look like a ball. So a few years ago, I was talking to some young kids, and I said, you know, everybody ought to eat healthy. I'm standing here rubbing my belly. And I said, you know what? Gluttony, according to the Bible, is wrong. Overeat. I think you ought to exercise every day. And I went through this spiel. And finally, one of the young people in the back just laughed out loud. I said, what's wrong? And they said, well, obviously, you're not practicing what you preach. So a lot of times in your business, you know, if, if I was to come to your place and ask about your smoothies, and you say, well, I don't like this one, this one, this one, then you're steering me away from some of that. And because if a restauranteur doesn't eat their own food, I probably don't want to eat their food either. And so a lot of times how you present yourself, because obviously I should be in your class and not, you know, doing like what I'm doing. But a lot of times it's, it's how you tell your message. You know what I mean? My mouth was saying one thing but my body was saying something different and your body language is extremely important because you will see an elevator pitch here in a little bit that 
gives you some examples of what not to do. So true. Do not have, uh, and, and this is one of the other things, do not have a lot of negative stuff inside your, your pitch. You know, don't start out with, well, we don't do this or we don't do that. Got to be positive. Again, back to how can I enhance, improve, solve problems in somebody else's life? Okay. Customize the speech to fit the audience. Read the room. Again, read the room. Know who you're talking to. You may have to change up what you do or what you say. I mean, excuse me, what you say to the person you're talking to because, again, with clients, I have one, one elevator speech. With a bank, I have another elevator speech. We have what's called stakeholders. Jim would be one of my stakeholders. I have another speech for him. I have to tell him how I can improve his organization with an association with us. It's all about improvement. It's all about enhancing, being positive. Any questions? Okay. We kind of went through this a little bit faster than what I thought, but what we want to do is to show you a couple of videos. One's a good way, a, a good elevator speech. One is uh, not so good. So give me a second here. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Now, I need to tell you about this business I'm going into. It's typewriter repair. It's Jim Bob's typewriter repair. Let me hit the buttons. I don't hold you up too long. But this typewriter repair, it's coming back. And I think it's something that really, I, you look like a business person. I can tell you're a business person. I'm sure you need one of these typewriters. You use a typewriter? No. Um, come on now, I'm telling you. They're coming back. And it's going to make a return. And I need to tell you more. I'm going to give you a business card and things like that. Wait a minute, I'm not done. I'm, I'm going to follow you. I, I need to tell you about this. So, what are we... Oh, sorry. What, what do we what, see? What do we see? What do we... Turn this down. Turn this down. Turn. Is that better? Yeah, okay. Okay. We were getting reverb here in the in the room. Um what do we see here? Yeah. Down or throat. You're very aggressive. But my, my question, she never, he, he started the, he started the whole conversation. She never started it. Okay. How, how could, how could she have started that conversation? What would have made her start that conversation? Maybe uh, a shirt with some logo on it and some printing and stuff that says, what's your, what's your business name? Peak, uh-huh, Peak Life Yoga. Maybe a shirt that said Peak Life Yoga and your name on it. Right. Well, that's interesting. Yoga, what, what exactly do you do there? There's your, there's your intro. There's your elevator speech opportunity. Something has to break the ice, okay? When the ice is broken, what happened? Describe what you saw with him.
Yeah. Wow, it's a beautiful day out here today. It sure is. Oh, I can see you're, you've got your hands full of papers and things. I can't get yeah, my hand back. Yeah, I'll back it up. Wow, it's a beautiful day out here today. It sure is. Oh, I can see you're, you've got Let me your start. hands full Let me start. of papers. Yeah, can you just be in business? Yeah, well, I... Wow, it's a beautiful day out here today. It sure is. Oh, I can see you're, you've got your hands full of papers and things. I can't, you must be in business. Well, I am. Well, my biggest problem is when I'm trying to fill out forms and things like that, sometimes I wish I had an old typewriter. How about you? Uh, I don't know. Well, I started a company called Billy Bob's Typewriter Repair, and I think it can help with the forms. And if you have any interest at all, please let me know. If not, I want you to have a great day. Okay. Wow, it's a beautiful day out here today. It sure. Look how you leave it. It sure is. Oh, I can see you. You've got your hands full of papers and things like that. You must be in business. Well, look how he leads in. It's a beautiful day out there today. Even though she didn't start the conversation, he doesn't have any kind of thing on his person to. He starts the conversation in a very pleasant way. He leads her into it. And that's one of the techniques you can use if, again, there's just no way to that they're going to start the conversation. Okay. So he leads her into it. And then he says, very gently, he started this new company. You know, why did he start it? It helps with old forms and documents. And she even hesitates because he says, um, do you use old forms and documents? I think a typewriter would help you. And her hesitation was, well, I don't know. He wasn't overly aggressive when she gave him some negative feedback. Okay. He still leads her into, well, think it over. He handed her a business card and said, if I can help you, let me know. Have a nice day. Still made a good impression in her mind because if she does run into anything that she thinks he can help her with, guess what? He was pleasant. He was nice. I'm going to call him up. Can you see the difference? Read the room. Okay. Um, okay. What we want to do for the next little bit is we want you to start working on, and even the people who are online, we want you to start working on an elevator pitch. Now, remember, I said it had to sort of incorporate your mission statement. If you don't have one, we'll try to work with you to, to, to get a, a short mission statement. And just start trying to tell people who you are, what you do, where you're located, and basically why it's going to enhance their life. Okay? 
Any questions? Yes. You can you can do it based on your business or or if you don't feel comfortable and you want to make something up, okay, that's fine. We're just trying to get you we're just trying to get you in the uh mode of trying to put together an elevator pitch. Okay. So again, people at home, we're gonna take a little break here. You start working on yours because we're gonna ask you at the end. Uh, if you want to send it to Faith and we'll probably read it out or maybe she can put you online and you can read it for yourself. But we want to end this thing with a, a sample or a starter of an elevator pitch that you guys can use. Okay? Good to go. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, sorry we took so long. We've been working on mission statements and elevator pitches here. Hopefully uh, you guys did it uh, while we were away. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box or get in touch with us and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, we may do a two-on-one -on -one with uh, me and Faith or me and Jim or all three of us maybe to get together and try to help you develop uh, help you develop your elevator pitch. The next few sessions, the next few slides, uh, we're gonna let Faith take over and she's gonna talk about branding. Faith? Thank you, Mr. Harold. You're welcome. Make sure I'm on. All right. So if you have any questions for those online, you can just throw them in the chat and I'll get to them in just a minute. Um, but we're just really quickly gonna do a basic um, 100 foot overview of branding, branding for your business, what that is, and just the importance of it and telling that story correctly and also visually appealing. So four main things that I always like to bring up as far as branding goes, four different elements um, that I like to focus on when it comes to branding. The first one is vision. Your brand is going to encapsulate the vision of who you are. Um, it's going to, again, tell that story, tell that mission, tell that vision to you. And just to point out, sorry, I should have led with this, but branding is the promotion of a particular product or company by means of advertising and distinctive design. And I underlined, bolded that distinctive design because that is key. That is one of the most important things about branding your business is that it's distinctive. It sets you aside from the competition and people can easily know, hey, this is um, this is who this is. So we talked about vision. The second one, I wanna go down to voice. Your brand will have a specific voice, so a specific tone. So say I work for the local CVB, um, Jamie Noll and her folks over there. Whenever they make social media posts, whenever they do marketing content, they have a more like adventurous and intriguing sound to what they put out. So the, the copy, the text um, on their flyers, on their social media posts, because they are marketing, you know, adventure, ATV trails in uh, our community, they're having more of an adventurous, exciting, intriguing brand voice. So it's important to think about what are you, what do you want to you know, convey to your customer? What do you want to sound like? Is it going to be more exciting, intriguing? Is it going to be a little bit more relaxed? Or just keep that in mind, how you want your customers to perceive you. Um, a lot of times we will, this is just a side note, we will suggest to people not to use social media posts with all caps because it can sound like you're yelling at someone. <laughs> so just keep that in mind in the back of your head. How is my brand, how do I want my brand to sound to people? What is that uh, when it comes to the way that I want my customers to perceive my brand? What is that feeling that I want to give? The, sec the third, excuse me, is visuals. Um, this is one of the most important by far is because it's in the sense, it's kind of what encapsulates branding as a whole. 
um, because it's the way that people, your customer will recognize you. Um, so again, visuals can include anything from a logo to your website, to your social media, to flyers, to apparel. And it's important, Harold mentioned it earlier, that you have a consistent look to all of those things. So typically what you will start out with um, whenever you start a business is, of course, you're going to start with that vision. You're going to start with that mission statement first. Then at some point, very soon in the process, you're going to move on to logo development, getting that logo out there, that mark of who you are so people can easily recognize you, and a color scheme. And some people don't really think about a color scheme. They just kind of throw whatever colors they want to out there. But colors are really key as well. And I'm going to show you another slide in just a second that just shows you the importance of colors whenever you are uh, thinking about branding and marketing for your business. Because colors, um, just like the tone of your voice, just like text or copy on a website or social media, colors convey different emotions and they make people feel a certain way. So we're going to look at a couple examples in just a second. So again, it is so important for consistency in your visuals, in your branding visuals. And again, I'm, I'm excited to show you guys a couple examples because it will just really drive that home. And then lastly, value. Uh, kind of going back to vision, these two connect. Uh, your value, it's going to, your brand is going to reflect your core values. Um, you know, the values of your business. And again, it's just going to help tell that story. All right. So driving home the point about uh, how it's important to at least put some thought into the colors of your brand. Here is a list of colors and um, just pointing out several kind of impressions or feelings that people get with some of these colors. So for an example, um, red might give you a feeling of excitement, energy, passion, yellow, optimistic, playful, green, fresh, sustainable, uh, wealthy, blue, trustworthy, reliable, calm. Just as an example, I'm currently um, helping after hours. Uh, a, actually, it's a family member of mine, develop a logo for his accounting business. And he said, I want the colors to be blue. I want some variations of blue. Now, why is that? It's because blue can give you this sense and feeling of, oh, this is trustworthy. This is a reliable company that I can, you know, trust with my tax accounting needs. So that kind of gives you just one simple example. Again, for our organization, the Bluefield West Virginia EDA, one of our main colors is blue as well. And it not only points to the state of West Virginia, but that we are trustworthy, that we are a reliable organization that, you know, serves the needs of our community. So it's really important to think about the colors. A lot of people will just haphazardly choose their branding colors, but it is important to at least put a little bit of thought into it. You don't have to go by, um, you know, these if you don't want to. I know some people, they just like certain colors and gravitate sort to certain colors and that's okay. But again, I think it's just worth putting, putting some thought toward. All right, and where should your brand colors appear? And I'm gonna kind of add in not just your brand colors, but branding as a whole. So your logo, your color scheme, all of that. So again, that should appear in your logo, on your website, in any email marketing, social media posts, flyers, advertising in your store, you have a storefront, stationery, uniforms, signage, events. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is seeing a business that they might put out flyers that have completely different colors, a completely different logo than what they have on social media. And it confuses your customers because it inhibits their ability to easily recognize who you are and recognize your brand. So it's important. I don't think we can run, I don't think we can hit home the um, point of consistency enough. I know Harold mentioned it earlier, but it's so, so important that every marketing uh, effort that you make, whether it's through social media, whether it's on a flyer, whether it's some sort of sign or a billboard, it's important for that look 
to be consistent. And I did add a little QR code for just a small little resource. If you need help with coming up with a color scheme, you can scan that and find that there. Um, that's Canva on Canva, which is an amazing resource that I could tell you more about later for developing social media content, flyers, um, a whole lot of stuff that's very beneficial. All right, so now let's look at some examples. So I actually used this example in a past class that we did for website design, but I wanted to show it here too because it just kind of, you know, again, hits that point of how important it is to have consistent branding on all outlets. So what we see here, I threw up Cat Construction Company. We're comparing and contra contrasting two construction companies. So again, one is Cat, the other one is Construct construction company and just by a glance which one just based off of website and social media would you reach out to first cat yeah i think we can all agree on that so what they did so well is you can see on their website their main brand colors that black yellow and white you see that black, yellow, and white on their logo, on their apparel, on their social media, on their flyers. It's every, again, every marketing effort, you're going to see those, that, that branding, that branding color scheme, uh, that same logo. When we look to the other one, they're kind of all over the place. <laughs> we see that the logo they have on their website is not the same logo they put on their t-shirts, not the same logo. Uh, that bold black logo that they used on Facebook, they have a, not a very, I, I, re I really can't tell their color scheme at all. Um, it's kind of just all over the place. Again, on Instagram, they have a different logo than even, you know, what's on their t-shirt, what's on Facebook. And even in the content that they post, it's just kind of all over the place. There's nothing that's very intriguing about it. They've just used some generic stock photos, nothing really original. Um, so again, this just shows you the importance of someone can land on your social media. May, so just for an example, maybe someone looks you up on Facebook and Instagram, and maybe the logo that you used on Facebook is different than the one on Instagram or the color scheme is different. It just creates confusion in their mind and they're thinking, wait, is this even the same company? Um, so it's just very, very important to remain consistent. All right, so another example, we have two different cupcake companies. Which one would you be more likely to buy from just from their marketing standpoint? The first one. All right, we have some mixed answers. The first one, yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I... So as far as the first one goes, again, kind of the same thing we saw with the construction company. Um, we have a consistent color scheme. We have that, the grays, the dark blue, and the turquoise. We can see it on their website, on their t-shirt, on their uh, Instagram page. On the other hand, Toronto, even though it might not be the worst thing in the world, they, again, they're, yeah, they're all over the place. Their t-shirt doesn't even have the same logo as what's on their social media. We don't really see that color scheme on their social media at all. Um, even though it, it seems like they've chose to go product heavy with Instagram, I think that's good to obviously we want to showcase our products, but also add in some, add in some different content. Um, add in, you know, a graphic here and there, or a video here and there. Maybe not just always, always posting that product photo every single time, just because it, it creates a more exciting feed and just more intriguing. But anyway, overall, yes, the Magnolia Bakery takes, takes the win for this one. And again, it just shows you it's important that your branding remains consistent on your website, on social media, on your logo, on apparel, on signage. Can't say that enough. And again, just to run this point home, these are kind of just a few key reasons why it's important to remain consistent with that look, that feel on all 
uh, marketing outlets. Number one, it increases your brand recognition. Like I said earlier, it will, if they see, you know, your same logo on social media as they do on a flyer that's posted on a door or a business card, they, they get that logo. Like Harold said earlier, it, you're, you're getting your business into the mind of other, other people and your branding, your logo is a way to do that. Because if you don't have, um, say you use one logo on social media, one logo on a flyer, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. You're not able to really make an impression on them because it's not the same look. It's not the same feel. So it can almost come across as two different companies, like I said earlier. So it helps with brand recognition and it avoids customer confusion. The second thing is it increases brain reliability and also just overall professionalism. Um, if you look at any company that is kind of high up there and doing really well, you can see this principle that they have all of their branding is consistent through all of their outlets. And it just helps with that overall feel of, oh, these guys, they really take themselves seriously. They, they look really professional. Um, and just it, it just creates that reliability with your customers. And then the last thing is it helps you stand out from your competition and tell your story. All right. So any questions about branding at all? I know we have folks eating. Any comments, questions? All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. go anywhere yeah so this is our website again uh you can see that consistency we have our blue main logo at the top that's what we use on pretty much everything um and again our website it has that blue we also incorporate yellow some now i will say we you know it's okay to vary a little bit on social media um sure just for you know to be a little bit intriguing but for the most part, we stick to that blue and yellow white color scheme. And well, we did pick the name My Blue Field uh, for the reason of taking ownership of your community. And I, that was a that was a gym thing that he came up with that little tagline, My Blue Field. And again, that the name speaks to what we do. We help serve our community. We help our small businesses. We give those resources. Saying my blue field, it's taking ownership of what, of your community and what you're offering, what you're, how you're serving your community. So even like Jim said, for those online who didn't hear, he went back to the construct, construction company. And in that name, the con, strat, con, you might just think of like a con artist or, you know, so keeping in mind your name, the name of your business, how that makes people feel and what that's conveying to people is really important. Can we go anywhere specific? Mm 
Yeah, so basically, like I'd said, uh, Canva is a free design tool. It can help you design social media, flyers, business cards. There's even t-shirts uh, if you wanted to on Canva. They have a free version, but they also have a paid version. Uh, we did do several workshops on Canva in the past, and that can actually you can actually find those on our website. You go under resources, and then it will be under beta news, and you'll hit entrepreneurs access. Um, but yeah, this was built in design in Canva, and then you plug it into Flipstack to get that embed to put it onto your website. So it's it's really really very simple. But again, going back to that branding fill, you know, we're sticking to the the blues, the variation of blues and that yellow, because that is, you know, that's the color scheme that we've chosen. So on every piece that you see on every flyer on, you know, like resources like this, any guide that we make, we're always going to have blue and most of the time we'll have yellow too. So. Yeah, and this also kind of goes back to what Harold was saying with having, like, on your website and on social media, not just pushing out product, 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 but offering a way to serve your, like, giving almost, like, freebies to your customers as a way of, like, not just shoving the product down their throat or shoving the service down their throat, but, like, I'm actually here to help you. Um, so this is honestly a way that we do this. Um, we have, you know, our free guides. We have our, I'll pull up. We have our blog that, you know, any class, like this one will eventually be on this page. Any class that we do, we record it, we write a blog for it, and we throw it on that page. So it's, we're offering these free resources for people. So we're not just shoving down what we're doing, you know, down people's throats. We're, it's almost like you serve and show them the benefit unto, you know, unto wanting to help, but unto they're going to be loyal because they know that you genuinely care about that need that you're meeting. So. For sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. Harold, I'm going to turn this over to you and I'll attend to her. Okay, guys, um, would anybody be brave enough to want to attempt their their elevator speech with us? Do a little play acting? <laughs> um, don't be shy. Me? I'll act like you're meet, we're meeting for the first time and... Uh, uh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Give them, yeah, give them that one. We'll act like we're meeting for the first time and you can tell me all about your business. You had a good one. Okay, go ahead.
Catherine, thank you for sending in your sample pitch. I'm going to read it really quick and uh, we'll give you some feedback. So it just says, my name is Catherine Atwood, a sales representative at Nationwide Notice. We offer the creation and tracking of liens and preliminary notices across the country, allowing our customers to save money and time. With our interface, you can rest assured that your legal needs are being fulfilled as well as your pockets. It's pretty good. Pretty good. The only thing I saw when I read it was uh, maybe a call to action. You know, if you're interested, please contact me at, you know. Yeah. Okay, anybody here want to try it? You want? Let's, uh, yeah. That way everybody can hear you. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll do it right now. Just say it? Yeah, okay. go ahead. I opened Bluefield, Virginia's first yoga studio, Peak Life Yoga, to bring new ways to ease tension in our bodies and promote health through movement and breathing. Wow. Here's my business card if you like more additional information. Oh, good deal. Uh, how would it help my stress levels? With all the postures that we do, I move the spine in six different ways to ease tension and it releases stress through all our postures. Can you see what happened, guys? She said something and kind of piqued my interest because everybody has stress in their life, you know, and she has a way of relieving that in a, in a natural way, correct? That could be something you incorporate you know, in a natural way, instead of medication. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Don't want to try it? Asani? Again, don't be, don't be afraid, guys. Get a comfortable level. Get with people that you are comfortable with and practice this thing because you can't be scared. You can't be shy. You got to get over that and brag about your baby, because that's what this is all about. Do what? Let's, let's do Ansel first, and then Mr. Ponder. Blue Appalachia offers first-class lodging for outdoor enthusiasts seeking memorable adventures, explore scenic trails, ATV, ATV adventures, and embrace the unique Appalachian experience. Perfect location, near Hatfield McCoy Trails and vibrant downtown Bluefield. Oh, Visit really? blueappalachia.com for more information. Mm -hmm. I also add though, I think it's important to have like, to write it, but I think it's more important to internalize it, what you do. Yeah, because you never know how that conversation is going to go, or like Harold asked a follow up question. Knowing your business as well, literally as your baby, you know, to me means that any question someone to have, or any, you know, any anywhere, because sometimes you might you you just don't know when you're going to talk about it. So just understanding every facet of your business. I think is crucially important because you can tell you're going to tell that story in so many different variations and you just got to be able to know it in and out to do that. I think she wants to try. You don't have to. You don't have to. But I'll pick on you. I will. I have to do it sooner or later. Come on. Okay. Hi, my name is Pandora Simpson. I have um, the Sandrosa food truck and I sell fish. 
and we're the best fish in town. You know, it's hard to find seafood around here. Do you like fish? I love fish. Okay, well, why don't you stop by on um, Cumberland Road 2424 anytime between the hours of 9 and 5, Monday through Friday, and we could hook you up. I guarantee you, you'll want to be back. Sounds good, but how do you prepare your fish? Oh, fried. Is it fried? Just deep, deep fried? fried? Deep fried fish okay. and savory seasoning. So we're talking uh, fish tacos, fish, uh, fish and chips. Uh, you name it, we have it. Okay. Sounds like I'll be making a trip to Cumberland Road. All right. And here's my card in case you forget. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you see the interaction? And again, if if you if you lead them into it and they're interested, they're going to ask questions. You know, they're going to they're they're going to follow up with you, and say, you know, I'll be giving you a visit. Do you want to try? Do you want to try? Hello, I'm Hasana with Youth and Me, and I. Hello, I'm Hasana with Youth and Me. It's more than a drink; it's a lifestyle, and I create handcrafted, all-natural, holistic, unique tasting smoothies and juices. And with those juices, we have it has high nutritional value, with vitamins, and it also have fruits that use enzymes that help break down fats and um, things that help clog and tenderness in our joints sometimes. And turmeric that I use is an extra nice spice that does a really amazing job with detoxification. And we are open remotely right now. So you can make pre-orders and you can pick it up or we deliver locally. And I have a website that's youthme.com. I also have IG, which is youthme at one. So. Okay. Anybody want to say anything? Yes. I know. I said a lot. Well, I know. It's okay. It's okay. There's a way to partner up here. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Um, the the only the only two things that's all, and this is they've already covered this a little bit long. You maybe gave them too much information. You know, you could have left some of the like I use turmeric. That's a longer speech. That's for when you're actually engaging someone like her, that you're you're crafting that speech to her because she's interested in health. To me, you might want to appeal to me by saying it's tasty. Not only is it healthy, but it's tasty. So you could shorten it down, leave it a little, you know, vague, just a little vague, not much, but you know, throw in a word tasty, throw in, a, you know, some sort of flavor type thing to get me interested. She, health per careers. Yeah, her health per career. Tasty would perk mine. 
You follow me? And sometimes it's good <clears throat> once you get in this a little deeper, like with your website testimonials. Look at this. Why, Bluefield? I'm going to let Intuit and Lorca. I've got the other one around here says Ominous. I'm going to let them tell the story. You know what I'm saying? And so if you could get testimonials, especially for your website, answer with people that have stayed and, you know, get them to do reviews. You know, when I first came to Bluefield, eight years ago after retiring from Virginia, I went to uh, a meeting and I'd been the trip advisor. And I, I put, what is the top things to do in Bluefield? And in the board meeting, uh, I said, name them for me. And Ellen Light said, the Overlook. I said, no. And she, somebody else said, uh, City Park. I said, no. And they named off this stuff that's really fun. And I kept saying no. And they were looking at me funny like I was being smart, Ellie. But I showed them where TripAdvisor said the top three things to do in the city was go to Cowboy Up, Hooligans, and some other bar that two of the three you're probably going to get whipped at. And that's what you're telling the world is the best things to do in your community. So when you think about it, if you don't tell your story, nobody else will, or somebody might, and you may not like it. So you got to be on offense with your message. You don't have to hard sell, but how many of you remember in school you had a flow chart? It's like an if-then statement. If this is yes, then here. If no, then you're here. You could do the same with your marketing. So if you run into me and it can be short and sweet, you've got that pitch. You've also got another pitch in your pocket. If I engage and say, well, tell me more, then you need to be prepared to give me more. Does it make sense? And I've never been sued in my life. So I became a county minister in Virginia. And the first time I sued was an inmate fell in the jail. I wasn't there. I didn't trip them, but they sued me as the county administrator. So in your local government, sometimes you're the target of things like that. So I've had to go through depositions. And the attorneys that I've talked with, if you ask me a question and I say, well, and I look away, a lot of times it's like I'm thinking of an answer. So I like that eye contact because if I do well, and I start stammering, it's like, okay, you are not a subject matter expert. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be prepared. And I believe I love athletics. And like I said, I used to play and don't don't look like I do, but I used to. And when I was also coaching, I had a game plan for no matter what the other team did. If they pressed, we knew how to break it. And different things like that. I anticipated and I look at things from all angles. You know, what would I say to somebody that looks like me that maybe I'm rolling my neck in the elevator? What would, you know, you know what I mean? You, you got to have a pitch for that person because one size obviously don't fit everything. Does that make sense? So, and that's what we do. And Faith built these. These are banner ups. How much do we pay for these, Faith? 200 and some dollars. And it's front and back. Let me, I'll turn it around. So if you're going to, an event or something like that. This is this is kind of neat that you can take and and use these, and it's not that expensive. There's a video I showed at the city board meeting this week. It's on Albany, Georgia, and for the folks here, if you got a minute to hang around, I'll pull it up. There's no verbiage in the video. It smiles, laughs, and things that makes you want to get in your vehicle and go to Albany, Georgia. So a lot of times in your marketing, you don't have to say a whole lot. It's just making it like you could show a good workout or you could, you know, you're with your smoothie, what you brought over to us and just how it's presented and things like that. So sometimes let your product or your goods and services speak for you. Sorry, Hare. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, are there any questions, any ideas? Uh, uh, Ansel, I love your response about knowing the business and who you talk to and everything. Spot on. Seriously, spot on. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll make a final pitch, and it'll actually be for Jim. Uh, whether you're online looking at this or whether you're here, Jim does something uh, once or twice a year. It's called Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur. And if you've never attended, I highly suggest you attend. For two hours, you're gonna sit around a table and 10 different business owners, well, well established business owners, let me put it like that, will visit your table and tell you how they got started, 
the good, the bad, the ugly of what they've experienced as far as their business is concerned and give you some advice on starting your business or expanding your business. It's free. If you had to pay for that type of information, trust me, it's in the thousands of dollars just to sit around and talk to these types of people. So when you see the advertisement, and these guys will send you emails and stuff, when you see those advertisements, please, please get some business cards and attend. No. No, no, no typewriter repair. Computer repair, maybe, but no typewriter repair. But okay. Is there anything online? Okay, guys, if that's uh, no more questions or anything, uh, thank you for coming and have a good day. Get in contact with us if you have any questions, any questions. Thank you.